Hi, this is John O'Brien from California Credence at CaliforniaCredence.com and I wanted to go over some things that people have had a lot of questions about and I've done a video on it a little bit um, uh, previously, um, but it has to do with routing. So what we want to do is we want to take routing from start to finish today uh, for multi-tracker and uh, one of the things that uh, people will do is um, using the uh, headphone jack, uh, where is that on oh, here, the, the headphone jack um, and then uh, just sending it uh, right left because in multi-tracker all they would have is the speaker speaker one speaker two uh, right and left uh, to where they have the availability of only uh, two tracks one for the front house and one for the in-ears and the click um, now California Credence used to do things that way we had something similar to what we have here power play uh, by Behringer which is a uh, headphone amp and the headphone amp will result in a bunch of chords going to all the guy's ears with just the click and the vocal cues going on inside. And uh, so one of the um, uh, uh, headphone uh, sends from uh, multi-tracker will go into the headphone amp and that would be your click and cues. And then each band member will plug into this and then uh, string a wire across the stage with some earbuds with the, and they'll just hear the click. And then that'll give them the ability to use a wedge, monitor wedge outside, feel the room a little bit, but still get the private cues inside of their head. So that's um, something that's hugely beneficial and it's very cost effective. Now from uh, 2014 to 2016, that's what we used. In 2016, we moved forward with a um, audio interface, something like uh, a good audio, a cheap audio interface uh, is the PreSonus Audio Box 44 VSL. Um, that is a uh, low cost it's used. Uh, it's fantastic, it's hardy as all get out. Um, and it has uh, multiple outputs. Now, what we did with that is we eventually routed that to a um, channel. The uh, right and left would go, uh, we would use both right and left on this four channel um, thing. We'd have channel one, two, three, and four. One and two would go front house three and four, three would be our bass track to go to a channel on the mixer so the, the sound man can mix bass independently because we're running uh, bass tracks. And then four was going to a muted track on uh, the mixing board. And then that muted track would then basically um, uh, be where it would be routed to an in-ear. Now, eventually California Credence uh, saved up enough money to get an in-ear monitor system. And so that's why we have a digital board with auxiliary outs and each uh, band member can remotely intermingle the um, click and everything inside of their headphones and be able to integrate everything uh, and not need a monitor wedge. Um, now that's uh, very costly but what we did is as we were playing we just kind of stored up the money and then reinvested it in the band to get a, a genuine in-ear monitor system. But what I want to do is I want to take uh, the, uh, some of the signal flow and let's just show how everything's, everything's plugged in. Now, uh, one of the things that comes up uh, in this situation, a very common question, people will say, I plugged everything in and I'm not getting any sound. Well, there's a volume control on your iPad that you need to make sure that you turn up. I know that's ridiculous, but if you don't turn that all the way up, if it's all the way down, you're not. You're going to have your audio interface plugged in, and everything looks like it's running, but you'll hear nothing. So make sure you turn up your iPad all the way. Uh, that will save you a lot of frustration. <laughs> Okie dokie, we're going to take uh, this situation where we're taking this marvelous old vintage nice analog um, Yamaha uh, MX-10, uh, I think it's MX-10, something like that, NG-10, MG-10 slash 2. Uh, and then we are going to do the old school. And so you have your multi-tracker and uh, you have your basic, uh, your, your tracks here. And uh, then you just have a cord that has on one end it has one of those. And then on the other hand, it's got a couple of these. Uh, one would be right, one would be left. And then uh, what we do is we just take this thing. And uh, this is the easiest situation. No audio interface needed. Plug this guy right in here. 
and then uh, what will happen is, is you'll get this notice that, hey, we got something plugged in here. So then you just say, all right. So then depending on which way you have these set up, um, you're going to take one of these and you're going to plug it into your mixer line in um, and uh, you're going to have that thing go into here and then um, if you're using the Behringer power play type thing sorry about that um, if you're using the Behringer power play then all you're doing is you're plugging it into one of these inputs in the power play say for example you have it on left and uh, then all you have to do is on the power play there is a button on the front that gives you a mono option and so basically what this uh, would do even though it's going into only the left channel uh, well you just set this to mono depress the mono button and then you adjust your level and so basically what's happening is this is going to front of house and uh, then this is going mono and um, you plug your earbud and your extension your long cord into that setup is really easy and uh, it's no problem so uh, that's one uh, method that you have that you can use and uh, let's go over how we would um, set up multi-tracker so that it sends things uh, let's pretend that um, oh i didn't plug that in all the way there we go uh, let's pretend uh, that we're sending all the tracks uh, front of house on the left channel and we're sending the click to the i mean front of house on the left channel and we're sending the click to the earphones on the right channel so uh, let's see how that's set up in multi-tracker on the ipad so that we can support this paradigm okay so we're looking at uh, the uh in-ears is going to be for speaker two that would be the right side remember that's plugged into the behringer and that would be for triggers and click and now the left side would be speaker one which is sending a mono signal to front of house and i'm actually going to use both these sides that's better let me go back to the click and triggers we'll put both of those on the right side that's the right and left of the signal into the right side and then we're going to do right and left of the signal of each of the uh, front of house um, to be the right and left <clears throat> of the uh, track so that it summates uh, mono into the front of house. And so we're going to do that with all of these um, tracks. We're just going to take the stereo file summated as mono into speaker one speaker one would be the left channel that one is going to the front of house uh, whereas speaker two would be the right channel that's going to the behringer headphone amp and into the ears now the cool thing about this is that if you look at um, speaker one that's a summation of what's coming out front of house speaker two is a summation of what's going into the ears. So each of these acts as a master fader um, for these um, for the respective uh, front of house and in ears. <laughs> All right, so one of the things that I get from uh, some users is, uh, hey, that's great information. Uh, the only problem is, is you left out, how do we get it from the, the iPad into the audio interface? That is a good question. So what generally I like is one of these things. It has a uh, charging port on it and a camera connector with a lightning port to go if you're using the lightning port. If you're using an iPad Pro, obviously you'd be using a USB-C. Um, but for those of us that are more budget conscious, uh, we are still on the older lightning port adapter and these are very fantastic. You can order them on Amazon. I'll have a link to that below. Um, and then all you do is you take this goody thing and you plug it in. Uh, this is a standard USB-A um, to USB b or some people would call that uh that's a printer connection yeah whatever uh anyway um so you just plug that in and uh now the vsl is a finicky little machine here so what i like to do is i like to put in the the connector here first into the vsl before powering it up 
and also I like to plug in the iPad before powering up the VSL um, and the reason is that I like to plug the lightning adapter into the iPad is um, because um, the iPad uh, lightning adapter will capture the uh, synchronizing the clock source to the audio interface. So now that I have this plugged in, this plugged in, plugged into the audio interface, now it's time to power up the audio interface. So I plug the power in and see that red light flashing? And that's not a good thing. That means that the power, it did not synchronize properly. So we're gonna work with that a little bit here. And so what that means is we're gonna power this down, power it back up. And you'll notice that, so now that the, um, I plugged it in, the red flashing light, so now when I unplug it and then I plug it back in, uh, you'll notice it kind of uh, takes a minute to synchronize. Once it's blue, that means uh, we're good to go. And your iPad's gonna show up with a little something like this. Whoa, almost dropped my uh, audio interface. And your iPad's gonna show up with something like this. And that's just basically saying, I see you. And then uh, you just plug this into your standard charging port. Um, and uh, so what that'll do now is multi-tracker is now going to give you the benefit of those outputs uh, that are on your audio interface using this lightning port adapter, standard printer cable, going into the back of the audio interface, plug in the audio interface, um, and uh, then you have it synchronized with this. So uh, now what we're gonna do is, oops, I'm turning it down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over uh, the routing if you're using a four channel like the 44 VSL. We're gonna go right into uh, using a four channel audio interface. And uh, this would be kind of one of the, the, the advantages of using a four channel is now you can send front of house, left and right. So let's say you have, uh, you know, uh, four plugs. Uh, this would be your left and right front of house so that you have stereo. This might be a bass, this might be the click. So what we would do is because it's front of house and on this uh, four channel audio interface, we just, hey, we plug those two in here and then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, give this to the, to the, um, sound man up front and we're just going to give him a uh him or her a uh plug into the right and left front of house done deal great um then the advantage that you have is on here then you can take maybe in number three and uh, you can plug it into here and then uh, you can take that third one and plug it into your uh, the, the Behringer, uh, you know, power play, you know, the same thing that I mentioned before. Um, or uh, you can plug that into a um, input here. And then what you do is um, uh, you can take that input and then you turn the main channel down and on this one, and then you have an auxiliary send, which would be like this blue one and that auxiliary send uh, then will uh, send a uh, signal to uh, an auxiliary send and that auxiliary send can plug uh, right into your Behringer. So uh, the advantage of that is that uh, you have everything plugged in here. Uh, you can keep it centrally located if everybody wants to click. In general turn down you have a one-stop shop here which you can kind of do with the other. But then the other cool thing is you have a stereo front house, which is very exciting. Um, you have an in-ear uh, that can be plugged in here or into the, the um, uh, Behringer. And then you can also take uh, an extra one if you have a bassist uh, that's missing or a drummer that's missing. Well, gee, you have an extra one that you can plug in here, put them in the front of house, and then just plug that person into the fourth output here. And so that would be uh, um, the bass, excuse me. Uh, this would be the bass, this would be the click, and then these two would be your front of house. So with a four channel, you get stereo front of house, you got an available bass channel possibly, or drums or whoever's not there. 
and then you also have another um, channel that you can isolate to the click which you can send to uh, a headphone mixer um, so uh, that's another uh, cool way of doing things um, and I'm going to go over how we would set that up uh, in multi-tracker if we were using this paradigm so let's have a look at that so first you plug in the, the VSL and uh, it'll show up. There's your offering of the inputs, one, two, three, and four. One and two is front of house, right and left, but the click is gonna be channel four. So we're gonna select the click, make it four, select the triggers, make it four, select the base, we're gonna make it three, and then the front of house is going to be one and two, but we're gonna, they're running stereo, that's why they're catty corner to each other, so we'll get a right left feel. And um, with this paradigm, um, it's a little tougher to have a master fader. Your master fader for these will be one and two. The master fader for the bass will be three. The master fader for the click and in ears is number four. And um, this is a great way to route a stereo front of house and also to have a separate click track. Okay, so let's assume that um, you've played the gigs, you've done the headphone jack out, and uh, you've played some lower paying gigs and such, and uh, you were able to save your pennies. I always encourage uh, whatever money you make from gigs, uh, don't waste it on drugs, alcohol, obviously, um, and uh, all that other kind of nonsensical garbage. Um, if you're smart as a cover band or a backing track person, uh, you're gonna take money uh, at first and reinvest 100% of your gains from gigs uh, into uh, more sophisticated equipment. The reason for that is because the more sophisticated equipment you have, um, the more you can charge for more different uh, events. And uh, so for us, we're able to charge more because we took all the money and we put it back into our gear. So um, let's look at the situation. I accidentally, this is a UI24, I accidentally broke this during a performance. So. Um, they're hard to fix, so I just went ahead and got an audio interface here, the Euphoria UMC1820. <clears throat> and uh, so all I did is I'm using only the first four outputs of this, and that's what's going down here. We have right, left, front of house. This is a bass. Uh, we have, don't have a bass player. This green is the backing tracks, I mean the uh, click track, and this is a muted channel. Um, so all of the mix, to say you have your instrumentalist that's plugged into all of this stuff and it's going to the front of house. The cool thing about a, a setup that's as sophisticated as this is that um, your, uh, each one of these auxiliaries can go to a musician who can tailor their monitor mix, mix embed the click and the backing tracks and their peers, uh, their fellow musicians who are playing um, into a wonderful uh, mix into their earbuds um, and the cool thing is is you don't have to string this across stage with a bunch of cables if you have something like this this is the x5 um, actually it's the x5 uh, x5 uh, u4 receiver and these are cool because this clips on to the musician this is berkeley's and uh, so this clicks on to her waist her headphones plug in here, she can control her volume. We have different channel selectors, so in case there's any interference, and so she just turns that on. And then this associates, because I put her name on it, and we have the same channel that's selected. We just turn that guy on, and we plug it right into here, into the audio in, uh, into the uh, auxiliary out. And uh, voila, we just have a through the air. Uh, this has a very, very long, um, uh, distance that you can transmit clearly on and uh, she just has all of the uh, personal mix into her headphones uh, from here. So that's very cool. Um, the only disadvantage is as you can see these are too bulky to fit one next to another so sometimes you might have to get like a short maybe one foot cords that plug into here and these just kind of hang off of the thing. Uh, that's what a lot of uh, people do that have this um, but let's see how this plugs, how does this audio interface then uh, work with um, uh, multi-tracker. So we have the usual, the iPad, um, we have the stereo headphone out, 
and such, but we want to access this. Now this is a lot more friendly than the uh, PreSonus. So we have the USB-A and the USB-B, the printer cable-ish type thing is plugged into the back of this. So the A portion plugs into the camera connector. Um, I get this item with the charging port so that it can charge my iPad um, while it's going. And then all I do is I just take this um, lightning connector and we're just going to plug it right into here. Uh, there we go. And so it's going to see this uh, audio interface, the UMC1820. Now we only use the first uh, four channels and that's where we have them down here. Right, front of house, right and left, uh, bass and uh, isolated in-ears on a muted channel, uh, pre-fader going to uh, each band member who's getting it um, through wirelessly through an in-ear monitor. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, the cool thing about that is uh, we can route this much the same way that uh, we routed the um, PreSonus audio box uh, 44 VSL. So we have the same situation where it's just going to see the UMC 1820 and it'll show up here right now. Give it a second. There we go. And so we have those offerings, but we're only using uh, numbers one through four. Obviously four uh, is the click. That's what we're routing it. So we're going to hit output and we're going to route it to four, similar to the VSL. And uh, same with triggers. We're going to route that to four. And then with these respective ones, just like the um, other uh, VSL, uh, oh, the base goes to three. And just like the others, um, we're going to go ahead and route front of house, right and left, caddy corner, one and two. So that's what we do. We route each one of these. Like I said, it was similar to the VSL. And uh, you're going to have master faders um, for the outputs down below the UMC 1820. Uh, the master faders for front of house is one and two. For bass is three. And uh, for <clears throat> click is four. What's cool is... Whenever you select one of these outputs, it actually tells you what's there. One, so you can see all those listed. And uh, when you click three, you should just see bass. And then four is the click and triggers. The point of the matter is, is <clears throat> take whatever you're making on some of your uh, gigs where you're, you have less sophisticated gear. The more sophisticated gear that you have, uh, the more you can charge because you have a lot smoother running, more sophisticated uh, setup. And um, this is also will get you into some higher paying gigs as well. At least that's how it's worked out for us. So uh, anyway, that should do it for today. I hope this helps.